let's bring in the panel. Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and America First Policy Institute Vice Chairman Fred Flights. I want to go back and start with the Twitter files if I can, because, Fred, we know that Twitter was blacklisting conservative voices. But the bombshell in this is that the blacklisting was coming from the talk. Barry, White, Barry Weiss says the following, quoting here, there existed a level beyond official ticketing, beyond the rank and file moderators following the company's policy on paper. That is the site integrity policy, policy escalation support known as SIPPIs. This secret group included head of legal policy and trust, Vijaya Gade, the global head of trust and safety, Yoel Roth, subsequent CEOs, Jack Dorsey and Parag Agrawal, and others, and Dorsey testified in 2018 before ca Congress, Fred, that they were not censoring conservative voices. We all know they were censoring conservative voices. They were, they were censoring me. I lost tens of thousands of followers about two years ago. The number of followers I have is frozen. I've tried to contact Twitter repeatedly to find out what this is, to see what I could do to fix it. That You can't email or call them. You have to go through the interface. They never responded. But I'm just one of many, many conservatives who've seen this. It is so gratifying to see that there are various categories that Twitter is using to freeze and limit the influence of conservative speech. And I think it's going to be fixed now. Yeah, it's amazing, though. Miranda Devine, the New York Post columnist who literally wrote the book on the Hunter Biden laptop, had this to say about it tonight. Yeah, Watch. they knew they were being censored, Leslie, because all of a sudden their, their sites, their accounts blew up again. But see, this is where I have the problem. Even though I don't like censorship, Twitter is a private company. They had every right and continue to have every right to censor. They're not a media entity. They don't claim to be. They're not saying we're putting out facts. They don't say that they're reporting the news. You know, what do they do? I mean, think about Facebook. Facebook originally was about rating women on a scale of 1 to 10 and almost like a dating app and what it's, what it's become now. I, I think it's sad that we put so much legitimacy into these, you know, outlets that aren't media. They're not journalistic. Is it and your position? Dare I say, do you think Donald Trump's platform is it your position has shadow is boxing for liberals? But I think so. Is it your position that this is appropriate for, for Twitter to do? I don't think it's the right choice, I, but I also don't think it's, I think it's very dangerous, a lot of the information that we've seen out there, whether it be from an Alex Jones or other people that fan the flames that, you know, lead to uh, either violence or conspiracy theories that are extremely offensive to people that have buried their children, as an example. Hard to believe only, only limiting conservative voices, though, it seems to be a problem for a lot of people, even a lot of Democrats, because they think, you know what, it's just not fair play. I want to move on, if we can, to the Brittany Griner thing, because Fred, congressional <clears throat> Congressman Mike Gallagher said this about the Brittany Griner swap. Listen, I think everybody, Fred, is glad that Brittany Griner is out of that Russian prison. The question is, what do you believe? What do you think about the trade? I, I think that was a great outcome, but I had many questions about this trade. I, I'd like to point out, first of all, when President Biden announced it, he praised his administration, but didn't didn't mention that this was negotiated by Saudi Arabia and the UAE, which led them to make a statement because they're proud of what they did. I also don't buy for one minute that this had to be a one-on-one -on -one trade. I note that the British negotiated a deal in October that freed f uh, five British citizens for 55 Russians being held by Ukraine. I don't believe that there's not a Russian somewhere on earth in another prison who could have been added to this agreement. There actually is one in Germany who might have been added. I think this was an effort by the Biden administration to free a celebrity for public relations purposes. And I think it is incompetent foreign policy and Congress has to investigate this. Yeah, and the fact that Paul Whelan is still there and the, all this time, Leslie, it really does it think, you know, maybe you could, maybe you could better have a better negotiating team to get this deal solidified. Look, I have great belief in our nation being able to secure Americans' release. The problem with uh, Paul Whelan, as we know, is he was found guilty, even though we find them faulty charges, of espionage, which is different than what Brittany was found guilty of. And if we're going to talk about a free swap, there's two things here. One, whenever we swap out a prisoner, no, I don't want to say nobody, most people, especially the Russians or whoever, they're bad guys. We're swapping out bad guys, let's be honest, for Americans to save lives and bring those people home, one and two. If we were going to have an equal exchange, we would have to have uh, a WNBA player in Russia who's gay, African-American, and a gold Olympian, and that's not going to happen. Yeah, a lot of people said they should have brought Paul Whelan out, though. I mean, you just got to make a, a deal where you bring Paul Whelan out. Did they try hard enough? Leslie Marshall, great to see you. Fred Flights, thank you. Great to see you as well.